Like some other DAWs, Cubase supports video playback. Its video playback capabilities are quite basic, but they're as good as they need to be for working with video in the context of composing sound to picture. The way you get a video into Cubase is you create a video track. If you go up to the project menu and select add track, you can then scroll down to video and it will bring a video track into the project. You'll see later on that this can be moved up and down in the project like any other track. You're only allowed one video track per project because Cubase isn't a video editing package. You can perform basic edits, but the main purpose of it is to allow you to compose along to a picture. So if I was to try, for example, to bring in a video file, I could do that by making sure my video track is selected. You can rename it, incidentally, anything you like. I'm going to leave it called video. And then select File, Import, and Import Video File. Now here I've got some video files in different formats. The reason for that will become clear later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring in one of these files. And before I do, you can see that there are various different formats in here. I'll talk about that later. Down at the bottom here, we've got a readout of exactly what the parameters of this file are. So we can see that it's a QuickTime video file. It uses the H.264 compressor. It's 24 frames a second. And this is the screen resolution here. This is the duration. And this is the file size. I'll talk about that in more detail later, but for now, I'm just going to import it, open the file, and it brings in my video file. And you see that this video event here can be moved around on the timeline, just like audio or MIDI, and it obeys the snap settings as well. So if I was to turn snapping off, I can move that more freely like this. I'm actually going to leave it on for now. If I wanted to make this thumbnail view larger, I could simply enlarge the track. And when you do that, what Cubase does is it interprets the length of the clip versus the number of thumbnails it shows you. Now, obviously, this isn't the main view of the track that you would have normally. You would have it running in a separate window. But it's useful sometimes to be able to show a quick overview of the track like this. If you want, you can also click on this button here to show the frame rate numbers. That becomes important when you get into the detail of composing to picture. You're only allowed one video track per project. If I try to add another one, if I do the same again, project, add track and video, it's going to tell me that it can't do that because it's at the limit and the limit is one. Video tracks are relatively limited in their capabilities compared to other kinds of tracks. And that's because they're essentially just playback tracks. You can do some basic editing, but not a great deal. So if you look in the inspector panel on the left here, you'll see that we have fairly basic controls. We can reveal the video window. Here it is, and that's freely movable and sizable. We're able to mute the video track. We can lock it if we've created some kind of basic edit on the timeline and we don't want it to be messed with. And there's also a notepad here where you can add information about the track. If I was to double click on this, I can reveal the window. And if I play back, you'll see that the clip plays back in a resizable and movable window by itself. There's no sound on this clip. In a little while, we'll see a clip with sound on and how that behaves. Next, let's have a look at video formats. 